Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Beagles Games Guitars. Today's video, we're going to be looking at the newest Uwe Rosenberg game, Atua. everyone welcome back so today's game Atua by Uwe Rosenberg is the newest worker placement game that came out in late 2022 I'll be doing a solo run through of it which you'll be playing as three different colors deploying your workers out on the board and collecting the different resources that are associated with this game so I'll take you to the table and show you how it plays solo okay here we are all set up for a solo version of Atua I'll be starting off with a red color. So in a solo game, you'll be playing three different colors, and each color gets three different workers. So you'll start with the red, then the yellow, then the blue, and then you'll go again, red, yellow, blue. The seventh round, you'll play with the red. So that's a good little tracker right there. If you forget which color you're supposed to be playing with, you'll just look up here as a reference. So you'll deploy the reds, and then they will stay on the board, and then you'll deploy the yellows, they will stay on the board and then the blues will come out and then once you get into round four you will take off the red and then now those spaces will be opened up so that's one difference between a solo and a multiplayer game the other big difference is during the phase seven the seventh step of the maintenance phase you do not flush these and draw new ones you just refill the ones that were taken other than that, this is a beat your own high score game. They say get a, at least 120 points. I have not even been able to break 100 points, so I'm going to shoot for a solid 80 today. Let's be a little risque. I will go here, which will give me a tree, and I get the draw, one of these from the top deck. I got the swamp, so I'll place that next to this. And now I have at least one food that I need to feed. So getting goats wouldn't be a bad thing. How about getting a bat, getting a gold, and then training a family, and then, no and thens, one gold to get two goats. And the rule states if you have at least one goat or one item occupied, a blank space can be any of those items. Sorry, can't explain that too well. So the worker phase is done. Now we're on to the maintenance phase. So I'll collect gold per trained family. So I have one. Draw a pollution marker per untrained family. So none, no pollution markers. Two is wild animals, trees, and fruit. So I'll collect trees and fruit according to this chart. I do get a fruit, but unfortunately I... Oh, I do have an area. You store them on top of trees. So now I'll return bats from my night tableau out to here. I have none of those, so now I will feed. So one minus two is negative one. So I'm negative. I do not need to feed my villagers or work people. So I'll move on to the breeding phase. So up here, if I have two families, I'd get another. I don't. If I have a bat, I would get another bat. And if I had two wild animals, I would get another wild animal, and I don't. So after that, you would return the workers. If it was a multiplayer game, you would get new terrain cards, and then you would remove one of these action tiles. And now we're going to go into uh, the work phase number two. So it looks like I need to get some kind of trees out here. So I guess I will get a wild animal and I'll take this plantation, which will give me plenty of tree options. I need more bats too. Let me double check the rules here to read what this action space lets me do. Okay, if I remember right, this action space here says I could put a bat on a village empty village so i will empty village right there and i could get a wild animal or two bats i'll take a wild animal or two bats 
Let's do two bats because now I'm going to do the bat action, which is optional. So if I have at least three bats, at least a tree and a fruit and availability for another tree. So you move three bats, return a fruit and you get a tree and you place the tree. So I did a, a bat action, a back action. Let's go ahead and get the trees out of the way. So three trees, one, two. These boards are hard to grab stuff with my fat hands. So that's three. So collect gold per trained family. I do have a trained family, no untrained families. So I'm not polluting. Collect new trees, fruits, and bats. No trees. I do get three fruit to put on my three trees that I put earlier. I do get a bat. Now that I've collected those, I will return fruit bats to my board. If I remember right, as long as you have one that's in its correct space, you can put the others on blank spaces. Now the food demand, one minus two, we're still at a negative, so I don't have to worry. Now breeding, one goat will give me another goat. I don't have room for that goat. I do have five bats, so I get another bat and I have a blank space. And then four wild animals. I have one wild animal, so we're done with that. No workers get returned because of solo. New action spot, and now it's time for the blue workers. Sorry, I'll put them face down so you can see them. That gets refreshed. Now we're on to work phase number three. Let's try up here. So I'd get gold per wild symbol. So that would actually be two gold. I don't have four uh, areas, so I don't get that part. But I will go down here and spend my four gold and three trees, in which if it has a fruit on there, the fruit gets returned to get a settlement. I kind of wish the slots of the board was the same width as four of these. So there's my settlement. And I probably need something. Uh, before that action, I'll do a bat action. A bat action. I wouldn't mind getting some fruit. There's really nowhere to get fruit, like a decent amount of it. So I'll do a tree with a fruit. Oh my goodness, fat hands. So there's three bats right there, because I'm, I'm doing the baction. Missed opportunity to call it a baction. So that was those. One gold per trained family, only one right now doing terrible on the families. Collect new trees, no new trees, but three new fruit. One bat. And now all my bats will fly home. Now I'll feed, I still am negative. And now I'll breed. So now if I have three families, I don't. I definitely have six bats, but I don't get to get another bat because I don't have enough spaces. And then I don't have the wild animals. So then I actually will return workers this time. Don't have to replenish those. We're going into work phase number four. We'll go to the cottage here. I'll place it right there. So I get a bat and a cottage. You can resolve the rewards in any order. And I was gonna do something else after that, right here. Families per that symbol. So one, two families. Ah, they're up here. And then if I had four of those, I would get gold, which I don't. 
this is where I'm going to start polluting a little bit. But I could do a action. Oh, I was supposed to do a bad action the last time, but it's okay. We'll just roll. So I guess I want to retcon my, my action because I had more than enough to take that optional bad action. Now my third turn. I wouldn't mind spending a gold to get the two goats. So I'll have a decent amount to feed. So I only get one gold. Now that I have two untrained families, they're going to pollute the world. And I actually do collect a gold while polluting. Left to right and putting the pollution markers on the top left space first. Collecting a gold from that one pollution. Now I'll collect trees and fruit, so I'm up to three fruit right now. I'm up to two bats. I guess I should have uh, should have taken my action on my third turn like a dummy. So I guess that would have given me four fruits. I kind of did a little retcon there, and I'd still get the two bats. So now all my bats have to find a home. Not all my bats were able to go home because I don't have any location. So I lost a bat. Now feeding, five minus four is one. So I do need to feed them. I will feed them with a fruit because one fruit is one food. So now I'm breeding. Two families will give me another family. Ten bats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, will give me another bat. But I don't have a space. Three of those goats will give me another goat. And now return no workers. Actually, we are returning workers. I'm getting the yellow workers. Now we're on to action five here. Work phase number five. I need to train some families. So I need to find the spaces that will train me the most families. Oh, the irony. I get an untrained family. Now I could train a family. Training that one would open a bat spot. This would, but I'll take a action. Okay. I'm actually running out of tree spaces. We'll go here to get a bat and a gold. And then I get to train a family. Retcon, I want to put this family. No, I'll leave them right there. Take another bat gin. And then getting some fruit would be pretty good. I'm going to get a lot of fruit, so I don't think I need to worry about that. Haunted house would be funny. I have spots for goats. How about getting a step? Which would actually give me a wild animal in that card. One gold per trained family, so that's three gold. So changing a two plus three for a five. Pollution per untrained family, so that's two. So unfortunately, I'm going to lose a bat here. But I do get two gold, so that bat goes away. I should have taken my third batchin, actually. Let me take my third bat action, because I'm forgetting to do this. So this pollution marker would go there. Actually, it goes left to right, so I'd lose the plantation. Get one, lose one. Now I collect new trees, no new trees, but I would get four fruit. Give me two bats. And now I would return these bats. Oh, 
almost had enough spaces without getting blank spaces. Feeding, nine minus five is four. Three, four. Let's just do that. Now I breed. Seven families, one, two, three, four, five. I only have five families. Two wild animals, I do. So I would get another wild animal. And two goats would give me another goat. We would redo that. Return the workers. And we're going to get the blue workers. This will be work phase number six now. So my sixth work phase, I might as well take all three batchins. And I need a more space for more bats. Haunted house is minus one and a ruins. Huh. But I need to train the families. My family's in training. Here. So per symbol one, two, three. So I'd actually get enough for that. And for four of those, I'd be able to train a family. I do have one, two, three, four of those in my area. Let's go ahead and do seven gold and five trees. One, two. So before I do that, I'm going to take my bat action. Which would actually give me one of those trees. But then I'd have to just spin the five. Okay. Which will give me a village. Now I'll take another bat action. What would be most beneficial right now? Training families. I only have one that needs to be trained. And all the training actions are actually taken. I feel like getting fruits. And go wild animals. We're good on that. So let's go ahead and get... If I remember right, that says a tree and a fruit and then a goat. Let me double check a rule. Yes, that is correct. Well, my actions are done. So now we're going to the maintenance phase of six. One gold per trained family. Oh, I forgot to do my last bat action. So one, two, three, four. And now I have one untrained family. And I get no gold. So collect fruits and trees. So I get a tree, which now gives me four fruit. And I'm actually I'm up to two bats. Now I would return all the bats to my card. Got them all. Now feeding. Nine minus six is three. So I will get rid of three because the goats are for three. Milk, you don't eat the goat. <laughs> so now if I have six families, one, two, three, four, five. I think I only have five families, so I still don't breed the, I don't breed the families, but I do get a wild animal because I have three. For goats, I have at least one, so that's more goats. And then we're going to the next round here.
So I would return the red workers. This is the final round, final work phase number seven. Bats would be good. Bats are always good. I'm gonna get plenty of fruit back by the end of this game. So I might as well, four gold and three trees. At least I'm not losing the fruit on the trees to get a settlement. And now that I did that, I'm gonna get my bat action. One gold and one tree. One gold, one tree will give me a farmstead, which I don't know if we can go further out than the four, so I'll do that. Take my bat action. I wouldn't mind getting a ton of trees right now. There's really only one spot I can get a tree. Well, there's up here too. So I could go up here to get that one, which also gives me a tree and a fruit for the tree, which I'll take my final bat action. I'm doing that right there. So gold per trained family, that's four. And I'll draw a pollution marker per untrained family. It's going to go, I do get a gold out of it. So now I'd collect new trees. I get one tree. I get four fruit. I'd get three bats. I'm going to run out of room. And now all my bats have to somehow make their way home. Oh, they made their way home. Nice. So now I feed. So nine minus six is three. So we'll feed them for three with the goats. And I guess we breed. So I don't have six families. Oh, I have 12 families. So now we're down to final scoring here. So for my gold, I have six left over. For my points on my cards, six, seven, so that's 18, 19, 20, 29, 30, back down to 28, so 34, 35, 36, 37. So points along the tracks, one plus four is five, plus three is eight, plus nine is 17, plus five is 20, 22. I've scored 22 all three times on that. Trained families, so I have four trained families. Any bat tokens over 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bat tokens over 10 right there. So my total score was 76 points. So I said I was gonna shoot for 80, four points shy, and that's the highest score I've done. As you can see, I've only played this three times. So not every time is getting better, but at least I'm kind of figuring out how to play this game. Let me take you back down to me and I'll give you a quick review on what I think of this game after three plays. Okay, Atua Solo, what do I think about it? I do really enjoy this game. It's growing on me a lot. I think one of my favorite ones to play solo right now is still Nusfjord, although I don't get it to the table that often. This one plays similar to Nusfjord in the fact that you are going with different colors out here. So Nusfjord, Rykolt, Feast for Odin, and now Atua, Atua, however you say it, do the same mechanism, but this one, Instead of two workers, now it's three. So it makes the board even more crowded. So you feel like there's a little bit of a contention for areas. So you have to plan ahead because when you take that action, it's not gonna be available for two more rounds. 
So that sort of simulates a multiplayer. It's a static blocking mechanism, unlike an AI that would block or take an action. I can see how this would be an issue at two players because there's a lot of actions and you only have three workers each. So that's six spaces that are gonna be taken up. And at the start of round three, if I'm doing my math correctly, there's already six spaces taken. And then each time you go, one less space you get to take. So it gets crowded after the third round on. The first two rounds are okay, it's really open. But after that, you really have to start planning what to do. And I guess there, there are different ways to win this game. It does seem to focus on the bats, but you do get a lot of points for villages or having untrained or trained villagers. So once you train them, then you can store the bats on top of them. So you can try and use the bats and the villagers in tandem to really score. I feel like the farmstead settlement and village towns, the locations are not where the points are gonna come from. I have a couple of them out here on my board. They help you just get more villagers out there. So they work to help you get more of them, but you're not gonna get points from them themselves. They're just kind of a tool to help you get a higher score. I do like, I like the artwork for some reason. I mean, this one's kind of basic and plain, but it serves its purpose, I guess. And I do like the artwork and the graphic design. The icons seem very clear and straightforward. There's not a lot of rules overhead to this game. If you've played standard Rosenberg games and you will know how to feed your workers and you'll know uh, there's different phases and there's different parts of each phase. You just follow the list and you do it. It's pretty relaxing playing solo. It's not much of a brain burner. You can leave that for Fields of Arl and Feast for Odin for the brain burning aspect. This one's a pretty decent the setup. The only thing that sucks is your actual player board. It's got like 30 plus pieces that you have to put there individually. If you've got big hands like me, grabbing these little bats and fruits can kind of be a pain. So there is a little bit of fiddliness, but I like that there's a closed market and only you use those resources. You're not fighting for a pool of resources. So there is a finite amount of resources. And there is some kind of thematic relationship where if you have more trees, you're going to get more fruit. And if you have more wild animals, they're going to poop out more seeds to grow you more trees. So there is this circle of life going. Anyways, that is how you play Atua solo. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.